Hello, all you fabulous artists, and welcome. Deborah Lynn here in the studio. Today, we're going to have a lot of fun. I've got my burn pile of paintings here. I'm going to pick the one on the top, and we're going to transform it. Um, it was a painting that didn't turn out, and I'm sure you have plenty of those paintings yourself. I think when we work in watercolor, we have only one shot to get it right, and a lot of times... It's hard to get it right when we're learning and we're on our own journeys here. So that's what happened with this one got away from me. So I'm going to redo it. And I could probably put gouache on it or acrylics or I could do all kinds of things to it. But in this case, I'm going to do a collage on top of it. Now, when people see, hear collage, typically they'll think magazine clippings layering it in and that's really cool some people do some amazing work that way but the only thing that scares me with that is that it's not archival so we're going to make our own paper and i do have one thing in the paper that's uh, a little bit concerning i did use some spray ink in it so when you use the ranger spray inks you definitely have to you use uv protectant on whatever you use that ink you have got to use uh uv protectant and usually i'll do three coats of it just to be safe and then your piece needs to go behind uv protected glass just to be sure that uh, it's protected properly or like i've made a decision moving forward with my art a lot of my stuff i'm going to get really persnickety about archival and um so that means if i use um whatever paints i use they're going to need to be archival um and uh my spray inks I'll probably be making my own inks moving forward. I have a lot of the Ranger inks yet, you guys, so I'll still be using some of that. But then again, like I said, those definitely need to be sealed properly, but I don't wanna get into all that because you know what? That's an expense in itself. The fact that you gotta do like three coats of UV spray over it, and then on top of that, it needs to go behind matte and glass, but that glass, price then goes up because now you're getting uv protectant glass which you should do with watercolor anyway okay i wouldn't use the standard glass with my watercolors i wouldn't suggest that for my client either i would always suggest you know make sure you get the proper glass um so you know it, that's going to change with my art i definitely am going to get really persnickety about that um, again, I do have a lot of that ink. I have a whole tray of it that I need to use up. I, I don't want to just dump it and get rid of it. I can use a lot of it in, in my, um, journal when I'm playing in my journals and stuff like that. And I've been doing a lot more journal art also. That helps me just to kind of experiment and, uh, not doing it on like large format um, pieces of paper where it's just getting really costly. Because trust me, uh, there for a while I was flying through sheets and sheets of Fabriano. And we know the prices, how everything has gone up exponentially in the last few years. So um, yeah, so I'm doing a lot more um work in my journal you might actually see some journal work come into my channel also uh when it comes to the channel i do want to do a lot more mixed media i don't want to be a one trick pony i don't want to be just known as a watercolorist i d definitely want to get in there with other mixed mediums and have fun um i'm always wanting to push the envelope always wanting to experiment and and be creative and um and, and look for new ways of expressing myself. And um, right now, I, I actually, uh, well, it's not just like right now, I've been doing this for a short period of time, is playing with this collage, making my own art paper. And I find it to be a lot of fun. And you know what you can do with this art paper too? That's really cool. You do it on a, sh a big sheet of sketch paper. And that's, you can find that all in episode one where I'm actually making the art paper. Um, so don't forget to, to watch that one. Um, that one I talk a lot uh, about all kinds of things, but 
Um, but what you can also do with this paper is if you seal it with Dolan's wax when you're done, um, so you put a nice wax coat over it all, it gets nice and shiny and it's really pretty, you can actually use it to wrap a pretty present um, that you've just created this whole sheet of beautiful art, you know, it's it's your own uh, doodles almost all over the paper, but um, you could wrap a pretty present that way with it. So, I mean, there's things that you can do with that uh, sheet of paper too. You could take pictures of it and make a banner for your Facebook page, or you could do all kinds of things. So think outside of the box of how you can incorporate um, this art paper. It doesn't always necessarily have to be in collage. It can be a lot of other things too. You know, you could work it into using it to make pretty cards. I did that for winter. Uh, we did um, some, I used my art paper to make um, Christmas palm trees. You can see that um, if you just scroll through my channel of how I did the little palm trees made with the paper. Um, so there's going to be a lot of things. I've already been incorporating some of them into the channel where we made Christmas ornaments. We, uh, we did silk scarves. Um, so, you know, I always want to keep it fresh and interesting and trying new things and also come over to the group. We're having a tremendous amount of fun. Um, we're doing, um, challenges now where, um, they have to fly solo. They don't necessarily have a YouTube uh, video to follow. I encourage um, people to um, to pull from within them and um, be their own artist and I want to see what comes out of them and we've seen a tremendous amount of growth happening in the group too. So definitely come over to the group. Come join us if you want. Um, right now, it doesn't cost anything to get into the group. Eventually, I will have it paid more of a uh, more of a private. Right now, the group is private, but it will be more of a paid for private group that I'll eventually put into play. I just don't know exactly how you want to format it and set it all up. So, um, but for right now, come join us. We're having a lot of fun, and. Um, so where are we with this? So now you can see that I've got all the rows of the flowers kind of coming into play. And that was a piece of paper that had a bunch of the micro beads all over it. And I decided it wasn't gonna work out. So I tossed that to the side. This is that tissue paper. I was able to paint some tissue paper and it turned out really pretty. I used some of that gold ink on there and because the tissue paper is translucent, uh, when you use the gloss gel, um, gloss gel has a tendency to be just, um, helps things be just a little bit more translucent than if you use the matte. So um, that I did learn. Um, so I'll share that little information with you. Um, there, I'm just going to throw down some words. Of course, this is all going to change. And it just turns out to be weirder by the minute here. As it, Now I'm like making mounds and it looks absolutely ridiculous. But it's, it's going to change. And I, I'm putting it down and I know it looks silly. And now I'm trying to put that there and it still looks silly. So it'll all change. It's all a matter of keep putting the layers on and keep, don't be afraid to just glue it down either. Don't fret about things too much. Like I said, you can just put another piece of paper right over it and just keep moving. So have those moments, just get it done. Just do it, get over yourself and just get the stuff pasted down and just work through it as you go. But you do have to kind of keep in composition, keep in color and scale. See, this one bugs me. This one, the color changed, it kind of got a little weird. And I thought, well, maybe that'll be kind of cool if I change the mountains. 
if I make them a little bit different color, but you know what? I made the wrong choice. I was putting down warmer um, hills in the back and usually things that are in the distance need to be cooler. And here I was throwing these down, not, not thinking it through, okay? And see, it's, it's too warm. Um, those need to be cool if they're going to be in the back. Um, so they'll end up being covered. So I zoomed in on my video for just a minute. It'll come back out. Um, I'm learning how to work this new editing program. And so I have moments of things being a little bit wonky. So for, forgive me for that as I learn this new system. A lot to learn. My, I had a few of my videos just a while back that everything was just all overexposed and washed out and it looked like I had like too many lights on in the room but it wasn't it wasn't anything on my side it was the program that I was using for whatever reason they had some problems and um, and I thought maybe they would fix their problems but nothing happened so I just bailed out of that program and I started a new one which is probably for the better so but this one's it's, there's a lot to learn, so be patient with me as I learn these new things with my editing program. So things won't look consistent for a while, just like I always start my videos. All of that has to be rethought. Re, all that I have to, I have to figure that all out. You have to let me know what you think of the song that I'm using as my like little theme song. Um, that I kind of picked. I found that on the YouTube, they give you um, royalty-free music to pick, and I thought it was quite catchy and cute. So, so far I've been using it for a while, and uh, you have to let me know what you think of the theme song. So, when you hear it, then you automatically, I want you to be able to think, oh, it's a Deborah Lynn starting. You know what I mean? Um, so, I did want to put that into place. So now I'm still trying to figure out what, what do I do back there? So I am going to tear this up, even though it's kind of cute with all those little um, markings. Uh, I'm gonna tear it up and change those mountains in the back. It's just not feeling right. And there we go. Uh, my idea was I'm just going to get acrylic paint out and I'm just going to do some finger painting and put some trees in the back. I'm going to um, intensify the sky because right now it's all in watercolor and it feels a little bit, it's too soft. It doesn't feel right compared to everything else. So that's all gonna change. So this whole top section is being, gonna be completely reworked. And I'm just using my fingers and just kind of blending the paints a little bit together until it, it feels right. And I think that's like a hooker's deep that I'm using, which is like a super, super dark green and even when you get it, you mix it with just a little white, it almost looks gray, but it's not, it's green. And of course I have white and uh, then I have also, I've got a little bit of indithrone blue there. I must be picking up just a little bit of those micro beads. I was brushing them away, they were all around my workstation. And the sky is, I made it a little bit wider down there closer to the tree line, just so that it really popped. I wanted that high contrast there.
And if you don't have any acrylics and you want to get some, I mean, you don't have to break the bank if you don't have a ton of money to uh, invest in all that. Just get the primary colors and some white and some black and, and you can do a lot with that. So for about five different paints, you can do a lot with that. but they are completely different than watercolor, that's for sure. Like I always said, it's like pushing glue around. It's, it's so thick and sticky, um, but you get used to it. You just have to get used to it. You gotta, when you're so used to using watercolor, it's like night and day. But the, the problem is, it's not the paint, it's the painter. <laughs> so I was the problem. And that's just a springy or a green coming in. It's like a yellowy, like a green gold going down. Um, I can't even think of what the name of it is. I'm just, it needs to be brighter in certain spots. So I'm just bringing that springy or a green color in. So my hands are all full of glue. My hands are all full of acrylic. They are a hot mess. At one point, I thought I was gonna be stuck to this painting forever. Cause I was just so full of sticky, 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 sticky. My studio was a mess. I don't know if it's, if you guys are like me, but when I go to create, I make the biggest mess. And I'm not usually a messy person. I like everything tidy and clean. Uh, but when I get into my workspace to create art, it's like a bomb hits it. It's like, I just got in here and it's like, oh my gosh, I can make a mess in no time. Now I've just got my liner brush and I just have that dark green going down. I'm just making some dark green lines and just trying to get some movement going in the painting. I just want to feel movement. I'm also going to, and then I got some water and I'm just kind of blending out that acrylic a, just a little bit with water on my finger and softening it a little bit. And now I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the dark blue, I believe, or is that the green? I can't, I, maybe it's the green. Um, I'm just deepening that section because when it, your foreground needs to have some depth to it also. So that's what I'm doing there is just intensifying that just a little bit. And that way it it balances out the painting. Now this is just some white acrylic that I am putting down and I am just going to make some directional lines and give it some energy and movement. And I'm working really quick. The quicker I move, the looser it is and I want it to look loose. And now I'm just gonna do some sky holes for my trees and I'm gonna back off a little bit of that pigment because it was a little bit strong there. And again, just building up the, giving some different values in those trees, lightening up things putting in those highlights, putting in those sky holes through the tree, because there they go. It was needed, it was definitely needed. And I just tap on the paint just a little bit, just to pick up excess, so it's not so strong in certain areas. And now I'm going to go in with the gold um, paint and use my stencil and just put some little spots down 
um, and I strategically put them in certain areas to balance things out to keep the eye moving around the painting. So it's all about assessing where they need to go and why they need to go there. Um, it helps the eye travel. So that's what this gold is, is doing. I hope you guys enjoyed this demonstration. It was a lot of fun to create. It was a two-parter. It was a lot, a lot of work. Um, so please give me a like, give me a subscribe, give me a comment, let me know what you think, and come join me over in Facebook group. I would love to see you. Okay, you guys, um, just make sure that you answer the questions, otherwise you're not going to be getting through the door. I mean, something might hold you up because you didn't answer something along the way. Okay, you guys, stay safe, stay well, and God bless. Bye for now.